Hello. This is a vegetable growing, myth busting video short. It's to help new gardeners manage their expectations. In today's video, we'll discuss the view that to grow carrots, you need seven hours of sunshine daily. Well, at least that's what it says on some videos on YouTube. You also need those seven hours of sunlight if you're going to grow cucumbers. Well, I would suggest if you're growing cucumbers out in the United Kingdom, you probably need a greenhouse as well. And you also need seven hours of sunlight each day to grow beetroot. Wow. What do you think you get in your garden? Do you get those six to eight hours of sunlight each day? Have you ever considered just how much sunlight you do get in your garden? Would this put you off? Do you think you get this amount of sunlight in your garden? Let me show you this chart that I pulled down off the internet some years ago and let me tell you about my situation where I grow vegetables in my garden at home here in the United Kingdom. Let me just pop this chart up for you. So these are the monthly average hours per day sunshine in the United Kingdom in 2019. Yeah, I've done this some time ago and I can't get a more up-to-date one, so you'll have to go with this. Uh, so what we're looking at here? Well, we're looking at this is a monthly average hours per day sunshine in the United Kingdom chart. It's from 2019, but I couldn't get one more up-to-date and I dropped this down from the internet. So those are the hours that you're looking at. Uh, and to the right of that chart, I've pulled out four months worth of figures. Uh, the last month in spring and three summer months and I would say that they are the most important figures because that's probably the time of year that most people in the United Kingdom grow vegetables and require some warm sunny days to make that happen. Okay so in the last month of spring it was 6.6 .6 hours and then through the three summer months it was 5.6, 6.8 and 6.7 hours of sunshine per day as an average and then if we average that out again over the growing period it's about 6.4 hours of sunshine. Okay so where do you think they would record this sunshine? If you're going to have a weather station where is it going to be? Probably on top of a high building. That would catch every single ray of sunshine in that particular day, wouldn't it? There's no obstructions on the top of a high building. What about in a wide open space? No trees, no buildings, no fences. Yeah, that would catch every single ray of sunshine that day that came across that field. Now let's move into our gardens. Let's go into the gardens at home. Let me tell you about my garden. So I'm gardening on the side of a hill. And if I look out of my garden, I look over the rooftops of the market town below. And I can see properties on the other side of that valley. And then further on from that, we've got the Western Fells of the Lake District in the United Kingdom and the sun's going to come up behind those fells so this is a sunny day at home grown veg so the sun comes up but it doesn't hit my garden straight away because it isn't high enough and there are some properties and it needs to get a bit higher in the sky and so it does that and it gets a bit higher in the sky but still I've got fences around my garden and the sun hasn't still got high enough to get over those fences. Well, some of the vegetables that I'm growing in my garden 
Does that sound familiar? Does that sound like your garden? You've got fences round it. Now there are also in adjacent properties trees, tall trees, and there are some tallish buildings. So the sun is going to take two, maybe three hours before it actually gets onto the whole of my garden. And then it moves up to midday and we get full sunshine on the garden. That's presuming the sun shines there. Could be a cloudy day, there may be no sun at all. The garden might not see one sunburn in a day. But let's, let's assume it's a sunny day. So the sun is now at its highest point in the sky and my garden is bathed in sunshine. But as it moves across the sky, it goes behind my home. And the garden is now in shadow. But the sun's still out. But it's not shining on my garden. It's not shining on my vegetables. And then it starts to go down. And it sets behind my house. It's shining past my house and on the fells, across the valley, I can see it's a gorgeous sunny day still. The sun is still out. But it isn't on my garden. It just isn't. So when we look at these figures, and these are the best averages taken from weather stations, if we go back to that 6.4 average, I'm guessing I don't get half of that. I'll be lucky on average over those months if I get three hours of sunshine on the garden where my vegetables are. I may get some sunshine on the other side of the property but the vegetables don't get that. So I'm getting significantly less than those seven hours that are recommended on some YouTube channels. Are you in the same predicament as me? Try and work it out for yourself. So if you actually took notice of what some people are saying in regards of how much sunlight you need, <laughs> you, may be, you may decide you can't actually grow vegetables in your garden. Well, that's baloney. Let me show you some of the vegetables that I've grown in my garden over the years. And with the amount of sunshine that I get. Start at the top left, beetroot. I've grown beetroot in my garden. The previous slides from another video said I needed all that sunshine. I didn't get that sunshine, but I grew beetroot. The next one along are a couple of courgettes, zucchinis. Now I grew them in that corner, and as you can see, there's a fairly high fence there. Um, and there are two plants there, one in a bucket, one in a bag. And I think I was in double figures for zucchinis or feature those plants, for courgettes or feature those plants. And they certainly didn't get anywhere near the seven hours of sunshine being recommended. Next along are some turnips. I was growing turnips in raised beds that year. They grew okay. And hey, look at those carrots. Come on. Seven hours of sunshine. <laughs> I don't get that. More than likely, if you're growing at home, you won't get that. 
that shouldn't stop you growing carrots. It didn't stop me. Look at that. I mean, that's a delivery. All those are out of one of those small 10-inch water buckets. Right, middle row on the left. Parsnips. I was growing parsnips in a raised bed. No problem. The next one's me harvesting some celery from a 10-inch bucket. That stood in my garden. That didn't get all the sunshine they're talking about. Next to that we've got some shallots. And next to that I'm, I'm just harvesting some leeks from a 10-inch water bucket. Grew all those. Bottom left, sweet corn. Look at the size of that. It's next to a fence. They're growing in one plant per 10-inch water bucket. They grew okay. Look at the size of them. They're about four foot tall there. Next to that I've got some strawberries that I grew. And next to that we've got some potatoes that I've just emptied out of that 10 inch water bucket. They grew great. They always do year after year. And right on the end, that was probably the best onion harvest I've ever had. And that was an onion harvest that grew in a raised bed in my garden. Nowhere near yes, seven hours of sunshine. So, what's the myth? You need seven hours of sunshine to grow carrots. No, you don't. No, you don't. That myth is busted. That myth is busted. What I would say is, you need daylight. You don't want to be growing anything in shade if you don't have to. Try and maximise the sunlight that you can get. But whatever you get, you get. If there's a week of overcast weather, you're probably not going to see the sun. There'll be daylight, but you won't see the sun. You won't see the sunlight. It's just daylight, isn't it? Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope it's persuaded you that if you are gardening at home, that you can actually produce these vegetables in your gardens at home. I did, you can. This is Home Grown Veg, signing out.